All right, so everyone loved the Agouti mouse. Great mouse. All right, asthma and pollutants. I had to throw this in there because I'm an asthma guy and I gotta say something about asthma. Um, this is a recent study I just found in pediatrics. Environmental pollutants increase the markers of inflammation in the lungs of children with asthma. Don't worry about them, that's what I care about. So we know this. This study was looking at it. They found that these environmental pollutants were increasing these markers in these kids. Move the child away from the urban city to a rural environment. They tested exactly how much pollutant was in each area. They did the whole well done study. One week after, markers decreased tremendously. Okay, irritant pollutant, remove it, get better. Treatment plan, according to me, would be avoid the toxin if you can, and then look for your nutritional redux pattern. Okay, and this is where I get into a lot of problems in my clinic because I have a lot of kids who won't do what I ask them to do. Stop eating McDonald's five days a week. How about two days a week? You know, and they come back in, they're sitting right on my, on my little table there with a big gulp and a thing, and I'm like, oh, yeah. So I end up having to use more medicine. But the reality is, data's pouring out. For the reason dinosaurs became extinct. <laughs> you know, it's funny, it's a joke, but you know, the reality is, is there is, there is data now out there that says that the, the generation of children being born today is likely not to outlive its parents the first time in the history of the United States. This is no joke. This is real. They had a, they had a, they had a symposium, I think it was six, five years ago, and the light, leading scientists in the United States stated that it is likely that the generation of kids, I think it's zero to 20 right now, or zero to 10, are not going to outlive their parents. Never happened before. Very sad. We're seeing it in our clinic. I mean, it's real. All right, who was here in January to the 10 American study? The, when Ken Cook was here. I'm going I'm to rip his data because I think it's great. I want to steal it and put it up here and let you guys see it. Whoever hasn't seen this, don't give the answer out, um, but this is powerful stuff. Uh, Ken Cook, for anyone who doesn't know, is the founder of EWG Environmental Working Group. Um, great website. Uh, it's a nonprofit organization. They put out lots of information about things from um, quality sunscreens to chemicals. They're working on the Kids Safe Act. They're very pro what you want, what I would consider all of us want to be um, in, in, in uh, favor of. Um, they took 10 human sources of blood and anim analyzed them anonymously. I think it was California-based blood, Kaiser Permanente system, and they looked at them for chemicals. They tested for 413 chemicals. In the blood of these 10 humans, they found 287 of these chemicals in doses high enough to potentially cause disease. You know, a dose of Paxil, one dose will be 30 parts per billion in the blood of an adult after it's done. A lot of the, a lot of the levels they found in these plastics were 40, 50, 60 parts per billion. Don't know what it's going to do to us yet, but boy, if Paxil works pretty good at 30 parts per billion, I'm a little scared at what happens with bisphenol A at 60. These were the 10 Americans. Babies. Cord blood analysis of newborns. Why is autism on the rise? Is it vaccines? I don't think so. There are so many things happening to mothers that they are unaware of because our environment is changing so rapidly without our knowledge. Worse diet, more exposure to bad things. I'm, I believe, without enough data yet to prove it because we just don't have it yet, that this is probably where we're gonna end up finding out where all these diseases are coming from. It's heavy exposure of stuff when the body can't handle it. The most critical time of development is that nine, nine to 10 month period in the first year of life and then again when they go through puberty. That's when cells are turning over exceedingly fast. That is the time of life when things can go wrong. Strong evidence emerging, we're killing ourselves data after data after data. There was a study I just recently looked at that had, I think it was uh, perfluorinated carbons, hydrocarbons. Um, pregnant, pregnant women who had higher levels of perfluorinated hydrocarbons had reduced ability to get pregnant. I mean, it's just, it's, it's coming out because eventually the data is finally being looked at. Um, I'm convinced the perfect storm now is poor nutrition, chemicals, behavioral, environmental stresses, abnormal and lateral life is the reason for a lot of our problems and induced epigenetics with abnormal outcome. All comes back to epigenome. Um, Michael Skinner, another great researcher, one of the founders of epigenetics, um, looked at estrogenic toxicants um, and expo exposure in utero of mice. And basically, what they looked at was essentially a scenario where when they changed something in the mouse mom, did it continue on generation after generation? So let's say bisphenol A, I think, was the one they used, or it might have been it might, this one might have actually been the, uh, um, the chemical that they spray on, on mushrooms um, to keep them from uh, getting uh, pests on them. And they looked at this in the mouse and said, what happens? Well, the F1 generation, which is the first generation that's born, had the problem in the, in the 
the spermatic uh, germ cell. They looked at the F2, F3, F4. None of those mothers were exposed to the chemical. Still had the germline defect. So now they're realizing that this can be generational. So if you have a defect in the mom the first time, not only is it something that that person has to worry about, but all their offspring. So we could potentially be doing things to our bodies right now that our kids and our kids' kids and our kids' kids and our kids' kids are going to have issues with.